So the most famous phase of Irish migration to North America generally was the great Irish famine, the potato famine from 1845 to 1851. Um, but really, in terms of British North American uh, migration, um, it really is the last short phase of Irish migration uh, to British North America. So 1846, about 30,000 Irish migrated, mostly Roman Catholic. In 1847, or Black 47, when there had been repeated crop failures in 45 and 46, um, we saw over 100,000 Irish leave either uh, British ports or Irish ports headed for British North America. Now the bulk of that migration came to Quebec. So somewhere around 90,000 Irish were funneled through the quarantine station at Gros Eel. Uh, and uh, about 17,000 went through Partridge Island Quarantine Station outside of St. John, New Brunswick. A handful of ships, maybe five, went to Halifax, uh, two to Newfoundland, one to Prince Edward Island. Those colonies were not affected greatly. It was New Brunswick where the Irish landed and many of them moved on to what they call the Boston States, that is New England. Uh, that, uh, that felt uh, some immediate impact of, of, of poor people uh, arriving on their shore in dreadful conditions, but the worst was felt at Quebec. Um, when you understand that uh, the trip across the Atlantic in 1847 was by sail, in ships that had been previously used uh, for regular cargo, whether it be timber or grain, uh, this was human ballast. Uh, people were boarded ships at Limerick, at Cork, at Dublin, Liverpool, where the bulk came from. And these people essentially replaced the rocks that would be used as ballast as these empty ships would go back across the Atlantic. The trip could take up to six weeks, sometimes eight, uh, if the winds were against you, which they normally were. And of course, the Atlantic currents are flowing in the opposite direction. And then, of course, uh, if you were weak, and suffering when you got on, on board because of the various diseases related to uh, malnutrition, uh, then on board ship in close confines with over 300 or 400 people uh, crammed below decks uh, in, in bunks three high and probably three persons deep, um, disease carries. And typhus was the, the principal killer or ship's fever. Um, it's a rickettsia bacteria that is in the feces of lice. The lice essentially uh, lay uh, their feces on your arm. Uh, you get itchy because they've bitten you at the same time and you in effectively infect yourself. And so the rickettsia bacteria gets into the open cut and for about a week it remains dormant and then you, you get uh, essentially all of the visible symptoms, the, uh, the, the sense of dizziness and fogginess, ergo the, the name typhus, um, some internal damage is done, uh, oftentimes blistering and rashes on the skin, and there was no treatment. I mean, in those days, uh, we have antibiotics, they didn't. They used wine, they used poultices, they used milk, but, but about 50% of the people who contract typhus die. And so uh, we have horrendous tales. A ship, for example, called the Virginius, which sailed from Liverpool, containing all of the assisted immigrants from Dennis Mann's estate in Roscommon. Uh, close to 40% of the people on board that ship died or were infected with typhus and later died either at Grosil, the quarantine station, or later on because their symptoms weren't detected when they went through quarantine. And that was the danger. So for example, 1,490 people emigrated from Mann's estate at Strokestown in 1847. And we calculate now that probably only 70% survived the first part of their journey to British North America. So, what we have are Irish, both Catholic now in the majority and Protestants in the minority coming to British North America uh, in 1847. After the horrendous year, uh, the shipping rates to British North America go up, the shipping standards change, and now it becomes cheaper to go to the United States. And that's why the famine migration is short, it's intensive, uh, and uh, it essentially dissipates by 1850. But what it does is that it now provides new Irish migrants to the Canadas who actually seek out communities of Irish who have already been there 
or simply move on through Montreal or Niagara to the United States. Um, but it is a tragedy. Uh, I'll give you the story of the Willis family. Irish Protestant family, likely from Tipperary. There were seven of them in 1847. They board a ship at Limerick, but the youngest child is detected as having the early signs of typhus by medical authorities at the dock, and the parents have to leave him behind, which means mother, father, and four Willis children get on board ship to sail for Quebec. Um, by the time the voyage reaches Gros Isle, two of the children have already died. There are four out of the seven left. Another dies at Gross Eel. There are now three out of the seven left. By the time Mr. and Mrs. Willis and one child reach Toronto, Mr. Willis and the, the son have, have, have been uh, in, infected by typhus. And by the time we find out the story, only Mary Willis is left living in Branford, the sole survivor of this Protestant Irish family who migrated during the famine. Is this a typical story? No, but it is symptomatic of a lot of the suffering uh, that was experienced by those refugees from Ireland in 1847. And it's no wonder that when you hear stories like this, that the Irish experience then is seen through the lenses of the famine. And what is completely ignored is the fact that 450,000 Irish were already uh, migrants to British North America before 1845.